Today we're going to show you how to use the brand new Generative Expand in Photoshop to make your images any dimension you want. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're going to show you how to use the new Generative Expand within the Crop Tool. This is the new AI features that are brought into Photoshop. Now they're completely out of beta and available for public use. We're going to show you how to expand your images to any crop you'd like, adding more information and giving you the opportunity to completely recrop your images after they're made. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here we are with our first image. Now you can see we've got our subject, the background looks pretty good. It's just a little bit of a tight crop and honestly it's a portrait style and there's just a lot of information here on the top. It's just blank sky and it's not that interesting. I want it to be a landscape style image. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab our crop tool. You can hit C for the crop tool. Now when you hit your crop tool, you have this option for generative expand. You can click there or right up here at the top where it says fill, by default, it's gonna say transparent. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it says generative expand. All right, so you can click either right here or you can just click on generative expand right here. Now you first click and drag the canvas to expand. So basically, I'm just gonna click and drag out in this direction and out in this direction. There we go, because all this space on the top I didn't really need. Now with this generative expand, it's gonna ask us what would you like to generate? It's totally optional. Most of the time you just wanna click on this generate button and it's just going to add whatever it thinks should be there. So let's go ahead and hit generate and see how this looks. And it's gonna, just gonna add buildings and detail to this image. It's not gonna know the exact buildings that were back there, but it's gonna add what it thinks maybe should be back there. Now with all these new gen, this is amazing, right? With all these new tools, you're gonna to have different variations. So just be sure you go to your properties window. If you don't see it, go to window and then down here to properties. Make sure that's checked and make sure you go ahead and scroll down because you're gonna have a few different variations of your crop. I mean, look at this, it knew, let's just go to our layers, turn this off. You can see there's like an out of focus, like some flowers or something here in the foreground. Now it added more out of focus elements and then areas in focus behind that. How incredible is that? Now you can just continue to do this. So let's go ahead and click here and then we're just gonna go, as long as this is set right up here to fill generative expand, you can continue to expand it out. There we go and now we have a banner style image. So I'm sure you can imagine like <laughs> the possibilities are completely endless with this tool completely doing a recrop. Of course, like if you need it to be like actually true to the details, like if you needed the building in the background to actually be the real building that's there, this is not gonna work so well because it's literally just generating content out of nowhere. But if all you need to do is make your crop a little bit wider, this is incredibly, incredibly powerful. So I've got one more example here. This is like a, one thing that I think actually like is a pretty common use case. So I've got like a person here in a mountainscape what we have over here, let's go to our layers. I've got like a mountain adventure logo. So let's just take our move tool. I'm gonna to click and drag from one image to another. Let's hit F for full screen. Now let's say you're working with a client and they wanna put, this is their logo or whatever. They wanna put a couple of different images on the web, maybe for a sale or something like that. A lot of the times you'll have like a wide banner image and then you also have like a tall banner image. And for so much time in Photoshop, like, you know, you don't have much more information. You wanna make the image wide, but like there's literally no more information to add. So with this tool, now we have that option. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna make this logo invisible real quick and let's hit C for the crop tool. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring some information here from the top down. We don't need all that information, but now let's go ahead and create like a banner ad. So I'm just gonna stretch this, there we go, nice and wide, fantastic. Let's make it even a little bit shorter here. I've had to do this so many times for so many different projects, but I can take the little bit of information that we actually have here, crop it out, and again, as long as fill up here is such a generative expand, you can just set your crop, and then it's going to literally generate all of this information. All right, so with all this information, now, do, 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 like, it's gonna take just a little bit. This is all happening on the cloud, so you do have to be connected to the internet. We've generated all this information there, and that's a beautiful, look at that, absolutely incredible. Let's go back to our layers here, and I'm just gonna turn this logo on now. Okay, let's just make bring it to the very top. There we go, we'll go ahead and bring that down and put it out there. 
So now we've got something that works really well for a banner, something on the web. Of course, underneath it, you can grab, let's just grab the brand new gradient tool. Let's hit G for the gradient tool. Up here on the top, just make sure it says gradient. We're gonna choose our foreground, uh, we're gonna choose our linear gradient, and then we're gonna go to foreground to transparent. So I'm just gonna click and drag out like this. There we go. And of course, I can double click on here to choose my color. And maybe I'll just choose a color from the actual background of our image. Maybe we'll get a little bit brighter or something like this. Fantastic. So now we've basically created a banner ad that's really beautiful, high resolution using the assets that we have. And of course, the logo of the company. Now they might come back and say like, okay, that's cool, but we also need the same thing in a vertical. So here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to hold control or command. I'm going to click on these layers. So we're going to click on the logo. We're going to click on the gradient and we're going to click on the background. I'm going to right click and we're going to say to duplicate layers. Okay. Let's just choose here document. We're going to choose new. Let's choose a new document. There we go. And now I'm going to hit C for the crop tool. Let's just make these invisible. I'm going to hit C for the crop tool and we're just going to go the other way around. Okay. We're going to create a tall banner ad. Let's go ahead and bring this right over here. Fantastic. Something like that's going to look really good. Okay. Hit enter. Now it's going to gener generate all of this information again for us using this exact same asset. Traditionally in Photoshop, this would be a lot of work. You'd have to do some high-end compositing, get match color and light. But now, boom, look at that. We can go ahead and start to bring in our logo again. Where is it? There we go. Let's hit control or command T. There it is. Let's just bring up, up to the very top, Mountain Adventures, and then we'll bring our gradient tool, our gradient as well. There we go. Let's just bring that from the top down also. I'm using literally the exact same gradient that we had before as well. Fantastic. Let's just put it in the sky. And there we go. So now we have a banner ad from the top down. Really, really quick and easy to do that. So this is just, I mean, there's a plethora of uses, but you can see here, let's just go ahead and show you. There we go. These two assets in Photoshop that we were able to generate from the same photo. Now we have a very wide banner ad here and a tall banner ad here. Of course, you can add text and logos and things like that. But then we also have this example where we started off with a portrait and then cropped it. And then as you can see, I can come back to this at any time. I can change my crop. We'll just go in. Maybe we want it as square crop, something like that. Just crop it again. Literally C for the crop tool. Use the crop tool as it's always been used. As long as right up here on the top, it says generative expand. It's just going to fill in all that information and look at that. Perfect. We have something that's ready to go for Instagram. So where we started with, you know, basically just this as our first image. There we go. We added and added and added. And now we have all this information. This is available in the full build of Photoshop AI generative fan generative. <laughs> AI generative expand AI generative fill is out of the beta. So it's available right now. Just make sure you update Photoshop to the brand new version using Adobe Creative Cloud. This is one of the biggest updates to come to Photoshop in a long, long time. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What are some use cases that you think you might actually use this for? I'm thinking of like older photos or like, you know, photos, a lot of the time, like the composition's not great where like maybe the subject is cl too close to one edge or the other. And you just need to add a little bit more space. This is the perfect tool to do it. You can download all of these images and follow along on flurn.com. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give us a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We'll keep sending you free Photoshop tutorials. Thanks again. I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.